This is part two of a natural logarithm integration section. So here we have to integrate this. Now, as far as what should be u, usually you let u be the more complicated part of the expression. But I do notice that I have even the more complicated expression here has an inner and an outer, which makes it twice as complicated, okay? However, we have some properties in logarithms that says that if you have the ln of an argument raised to a power, you can rewrite it as that power times the ln of x, or whatever the argument is. So in this case, I could rewrite that as um, 3 ln of x. And then if I wanted to, to take the constant multipliers out of the problem, I could do 4 thirds and then um, 1 over x ln of x dx. So again, um, the more complicated part here would probably be the ln of x. So that's what I'm going to let u equal. And then du is actually 1 over x with a dx tagged along. Now I do have all of those parts here. Remember, this is just side work. Um, if I wanted to rewrite this in a row, I could write 1 over x times 1 over ln of x times dx. And if I multiplied all three of these fractions together, I would end up with this expression. So these two lines are in fact equivalent. But it helps me to identify better that this is going to be my u. So u is going to go downstairs. And 1 over x times dx is going to be my du. So I can put it upstairs or I could put it on the side. Um, but regardless, I'm going to have this expression here. When I integrate it, though, it's going to be the ln of the absolute value of u plus c. And then if I back sub what u was, I get the ln of the ln of x plus c. Now, um, the ln, this was just ln of x, so notice that there's no extra bars inside here. It's just that as it is by itself, okay? Um, and that is it. That's the end of this expression. I don't need to simplify it any further or anything like that. Okay. Now example four is going to be similar. We're all still going to integrate, but this one is a definite integral, which means I have bounds that I'm going to have to use at the end of the problem. So instead of, once I integrate, instead of putting plus C, I'm going to remind myself I have to evaluate the expression. Before I can do that, let's write cotangent as a fraction. We are in the ln section, and for the ln section, um, typically you have to have a fraction because you want to have du over u in order to get an ln. So cotangent is actually cosine of the angle over sine of the angle. And since when you're doing logarithms, it's usually du over u, the u is typically what's in the denominator. So I'm going to let u equal sine of theta over 9. Then du is going to require chain rule. So the derivative of sine is cosine of the same angle. And applying the chain rule times the derivative of that angle, which is 1 ninth. And again, we have to tag on a d theta because we don't know what variable we're integrating with respect to. So here, I do notice that if I try to substitute this here, um, I am going to have sine, which is u in the denominator, but I am going to have this term and this term left over. Now, I do have those here, but I have this extra 1 ninth. So if I multiply this equation by 9 on both sides, I will end up with cosine of theta over 9 d theta. So now I can substitute cosine theta over 9 d theta with 9 du. Then I can take the 9 out as a multiplier. Again, I need to note that this is just side work. Okay. Um, we will get 9.
du over u, which we know is just the ln of the absolute value of u. However, the problem is, is we can't plug these numbers in because these values are for thetas, not for u's. So we have to finish the whole integration process before we can do the evaluation part. So u is actually sine of theta over nine. Now that I'm completely finished with all of the integration part, I can substitute. So we get nine ln the sine of 27 pi over two over nine minus nine ln sine of nine pi over two over nine. And we end up with, this goes into there three times, this goes in there once. So we end up with nine ln sine of three pi over two minus nine ln of sine of pi over two. And if we evaluate, let's look at the unit circle. Here's three pi over two. The y value there is actually negative one. And sine of pi over two, the y value here is one. Well, the absolute value of negative one is one and the absolute value of one is one. Now these are the same expressions, so I do know I will get zero. But ln of one is zero, and ln of one is zero. So either way, we still get zero minus zero, which is zero. So that's the integral, the integral value that we end up with here.